Just about anything you can do with a drawing in Mental Canvas also applies to imagery. You can download this image if you'd like to follow along. In the Layers panel, you will see an image icon. This is where you can import images into your canvas. You can add images to any canvas in your scene. Make sure you're in drawing mode so you're facing the canvas. When you tap on the image icon, it will open up your files so you can select an image. You can actually select multiple images here, but for this example, I'm just going to choose one. Now we can resize the image if needed, and up here on the top right, you have the choice of using full resolution or 2K if you've brought in a large image. Now, if you're happy with the image, you can tap confirm. Now our image has become a layer on this canvas and the layer has been named the image file name. You can see in viewing mode that it's totally flat because there's only one canvas. So now let's take a look at some ways you can work with images. It's often helpful to trace images. To do that, we can adjust the opacity in the layers panel. Make sure you have the image layer selected and then use the slider to adjust the opacity. Now let's go to drawing mode and we can start tracing over the image in the layer above. If you want to use an image for just reference, you could hide the image after you've traced it or delete the layer. Now that we have our drawing, we could use some of the projection tools to add depth, like projecting this building into the foreground. But we can actually do the same thing with the image itself. So I'm gonna hide these trace lines and return to the image. Now I'm going to tap on the selection icon to open up the selection tools. When working with images, it's often helpful to use the lasso tool instead of the default selection because the lasso tool enables you to select parts of images. One helpful tip is that you can draw a semicircle to get a straight edge. So I'm going to select the building here like this. Now that I have it selected, I can use the projection tools to project this building into the foreground. Feel free to pause here and select the building. I'm choosing the duplicate option because I want to copy the building. If I did not use the duplicate tool, then I'd be cutting out the building and leaving a gap in the original image. Now we can tap on the projection tool. I'll make this preview larger and find a good view so it's easy to see. Now as we drag up and down in the main view, we can see the selected building is being projected into the foreground. This is exactly the same as the examples in the projection videos but this time we're just using an image rather than a drawing. When you're happy with the position of the building, tap confirm. And now if we go to viewing mode, we can see the building is in a new canvas in the foreground and the original canvas with the image is in the background. The key here is that when you look at the image straight on from the original point of view, it looks exactly the same. Now I want to hinge the sides of the building so they're at an angle. So I want to make sure I'm on the new canvas with the cutout building, and then I'll go to drawing mode and then tap on selection to select the side of the building. Again, I'm using the lasso tool here and selecting the side of the building like this. You can pause here to select the building if you're following along. Now that we have the side of the building selected, we will use the hinge tool to angle it. Again, hinge will work in the same way that we've seen in the hinge videos, the only difference here is that we're using an image. So I'll set my axis along the edge of the building because that's where the two sides meet. Now I can hinge the side of the building back at an angle. Watch the hinge video to learn more about this process. Now we've created a new canvas with the side of the building. I'm going to go ahead and hinge the other side so it's also at an angle. This time, I don't need to use the selection tools, I can just tap on the hinge tool because I want to hinge the entire canvas, not just a selected region. And there we have it. The image looks exactly the same as the original, but this building is now popping out into the foreground. You can also collage drawings and images together. And one really helpful tool is the eyedropper. So let's say I want to cover up some of the original image that you can see in the background here. I can use the eyedropper tool to fill it in and match the colors of the sky from the image. I'll open the color panel and then choose the eyedropper tool. 
Then, as I swipe my pen over the image, it will pull the color from the image. Then you can just get started drawing. Give it a try. In this example, we used a simple JPEG image, but you can also import PNGs with transparency, which can be really useful. For example, I want to add some birds to the sky. I'm going to place a new canvas in the foreground for the birds. Then I'll open up the layers panel for that canvas and select this PNG with birds. Now I can place that image in the scene and you can see the transparency works really nicely here. So this is a brief example of how you can work with images. As you can see, there is a wide range of possibilities. You could create an entire mental canvas scene with imagery alone, or you can collage images and drawings together. Take some time to explore how you can use images in your scene.